from Paramount Pictures, it's Flash Friday. It just makes me want to puke my guts out. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8. Six, six. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of our program. Here we are. Together again on the radio on this Flash Friday with headlights on. Headlights on, men. Turn the headlights on, ladies. If you see a pair of headlights, show that guy your knockers. Let's see them. And if you see a nice pair of cans, do call me at 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Wide open televotes on the Tom Like His Show on this Flash Friday. Anything goes, anything at all, we can talk about whatever's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game. Long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the air. That's all you do is call 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Brian, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Mr. Likas, how are you? Great. Thank you for taking my call. My name is Brian. I am uh, the 24-year-old. I just graduated uh, grad school and moved here about a month ago from uh, from Philadelphia. Uh-huh. And I uh, I taught your show, uh, The Tasting Room, um, a little while back, and I really enjoyed it. So I wanted to call and talk to you about beer. All right. Um, I am uh, I'm a real big fan of uh, stouts and, and porters. I wanted to know if you had any uh, suggestions for me. On stouts and porters? That's right. Now we had a stout. What what was the one uh, that we were going to put in my kegerator that time? It was not long ago, and we decided it was not a quaffing brew. It was so it was very good. I'm trying to remember which one that was that a Sierra Nevada stout. Sierra Nevada makes a stout. They do, but I don't know if it was Sierra Nevada. Was it Firestone? Was in fire. So Gary's going to do a little research. We'll get back to you on that. All right. Well, uh, I, have a, I have a suggestion for you if you're a Stout fan. Real quick, as I said, I'm a, I'm a Pennsylvania guy, born and raised in Philadelphia. So if you ever see Weyerbacher Imperial Stout, it is a uh, it is a suggestion on my behalf. Well, uh, the Dago you spoke to when you called in, DJ D'Amelio, he is from Philly. Yeah, that's what he told me. We had a lot in common. He seems like a great guy. Are you Italian like him? No, I'm not. No, yeah. I'm not. He's Italian. The guy yeah. sweats olive oil, for Christ's sake. <laughs> well, hey, uh, I actually really enjoyed your show since I've been here. I've only caught it for like a month, like I said, but uh, I think you and I have the same ends in mind, maybe different means. But um, as I said, I'm 24. I just got out of grad school, and I actually just, just bought my uh, my first place in Huntington Beach. And next weekend, uh, a bunch of my friends are on the way down, just now, some old buddies. All right, now, that's good. Now, let me, uh, let me ask you this question. Play it <laughs> on if, me. As if I have to ask this question, because our producer, Gary Zabransky, is from New Jersey, and he, he goes to Philly every time he's, uh, he's in Jersey. To I'm really sorry for Gary. Yeah, well, I, I hear uh, the, the, the women in Huntington Beach, how would you compare them to Philly? I'll tell you, as I mentioned, as I mentioned uh, I've got some bragging rights here. I, I, it's, it's pretty much uncomparable. I don't even think I they're say. on the. Uh, I don't even think they're on the same plane of existence. I I, I totally agree. I, I, I I've been to Philly, but not as much as uh, you and Gary, of course. But uh, uh, Gary, uh, what's the deal? Well, I wanted to jump in and say I think it was the Anderson Valley Oatmeal Stout we were talking oh, about. Oh, was... there we go. That's right. Yeah, you can't possibly compare the women of oh. Philly to, to the women <laughs> of the South Bay. I mean, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> No, that's I live. Uh, yeah, I live a half a mile from the water, and um, yeah. I get a plenty of eye candy in Southern California. Yeah, no, it. it's an entirely different situation, it's and different without situation. any of that attitude that comes with a Philly chick. And what I know, that? without any of the attitude that comes with a Philly chick, and there's plenty yeah, of attitude. Yeah, yeah, you really kind of yeah, yeah. got a kind of a, uh, it's a, a battle. Back apathy here in Southern right, California. Right, exactly. It's a wonderful a, thing. A Take advantage game. of it; you'll really enjoy it. I am. I am enjoying it. Women whose parents booed Santa Claus at the big parade downtown. That's. <laughs> That's that's what kind of women we're talking about in Philly. Absolutely, it's uh, it's absolutely true. So what I was saying is, my 
a bunch of my friends are on the way down, Tom, and um, I wanted to, uh, I, you know, I got plenty of the eye candy for bragging rights, but I wanted to take them out. And uh, so I thought if you knew the beer, you probably knew the places to pick it up. In Huntington Beach? Not necessarily Huntington Beach. I, uh, I, I'd i love to take them actually downtown. I, I'm sure there's plenty. Of downtown there. Los Angeles? Forget it. Don't do it. Well, there are a few bars downtown, but you have to understand it's not what you're expecting. If you're expecting it to be like downtown Manhattan, like Manhattan or Philadelphia, it's not like that. No, all right. Downtown L.A. is uh, in many ways like Wall Street in Manhattan. Uh, you know, at 5.01 p.m., most people uh, scatter. Wow. Uh, here are the places downtown that I recommend. Again, I'm not a big downtown guy. I have right, well, let, let, let's drop downtown. Uh, I just, uh, Jim, I'm going to tell you because there are some good bars downtown, but you got to know where to look. All right, uh, they, you got the Broadway Bar, which is uh, between Eighth and Ninth on uh, Broadway, which I think is a really cool bar. Okay. You got the Golden Gopher. You got the J Lounge, which is really good. Golden Gopher K Lounge. No J J like Jordan J J yeah. Lounge. Got it. These are all good bars, and of course, there's a Palm Restaurant. Two blocks from Staples Center with a really cool bar, especially if something's going on at Staples Center that night. Yeah. Now, for me, those are the bars, and I, I really don't know. You know any other yeah, cool You can bars? also check out the standard up top. That's yeah, the always, standard, I guess, that's, yes. That's good for people that come in from out of town. Yeah, that's. I forgot about the standard. Because we got well, the standard yeah, West I gotta, I'm not going to be an out of towner forever. I think this is going to be my home for a while. It's way too beautiful to leave, I think. Well, you're, not, you're never going back to Philly. Let, let me. You're going to say you are because you just got here. Like yeah. all the New Yorkers, yeah, I got, just got out here, but I'll be going back, of course, because New York is so much better than this plastic place uh, with all I, these I fruits like and nuts and flakes out here. Plastic. I'm They're not all plastic. Totally Are you kidding? Pla with some acrylic nails, some plastic breasts. Are you kidding? Count me in. Yeah, at, at what point did making be things better become a, a problem? Well, yeah, we got, you want the all-natural chicks of New Jersey or Philadelphia? Come on. Oh, my gosh. I don't think one good things come out of New Jersey, except for your <laughs> fine producer. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, these are the girls who, you know, you <laughs> I eat along Route 3, there are these bars, and, and you go in, and the women are in there, and they've got that big can of Aquanet in their purse, mm, and they're yeah, chewing gum. Like you know the Aquanet. kind of chicks I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I do. Well, it's just nothing like some Aquanet and uh, yes. beer in their hand to really get me going at a bar. So Yeah, absolutely. And you got Route 46 and Route 23, and uh, New Jersey just full of those places with those bars. They're not yeah, quite, I, they're not, they're, by the way, they're not Bettigans and Hooligans. These are local bars. Yeah. And, and the chicks are pretty hardcore. Yeah, well, I don't think anything is left, anything is, you know, more unattractive than a New Jersey accent, unless you had like a German woman. Oh, with uh, well, I, I hate to tell you this, Brian, but Philly is now far behind. <laughs> hey, come on now, Tom. Come on. Come we're, on. We're friends here. I know, but it's a little nasal, Brian. You, you'll find out as time goes. It's a little nasal. Yeah, I'll just grow my hair long and start talking uh, like a hippie. I think it's enough time spent walking around those streets holding your nose. Eventually, it sticks. <laughs> remember your well, mother? Remember, remember your mother told you don't. Remember your mother told you. Wait, 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 wait. Remember your mother told you don't cross your eyes. Are going to stay that way? What's that? You remember your mother told you don't cross your eyes because it's going to stay that way? I, I mean, maybe not in those words, but I... My, my mother told me, don't cross your eyes, it's going to stay that way. So it's the uh, kind of the same thing, you know, you know, all those years of holding your nose while you're wandering around downtown Philly, eventually it just gets kind of nasal. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't smell like it. It's my homeland. I have a little bit of, I still have some Philly pride in my soul. Well, look, it, look if I'm smelling cheesesteaks, uh, sandwiches, I'm I'm all about that, okay? Yeah. But, but if I'm smelling bus fumes down there uh, downtown, no, I'm out. All right. Well, let's talk one more thing since, I, since I've got your attention, apparently. Can we talk comedy clubs? We can, yes. All right. I uh, I've seen some big acts actually in a uh, like the like the improv in Riverside. I'm a big. Uh, I, am I allowed to say their names? I, I got. I love stand up comedy. Yeah, like yeah. We thing. we say the names of comedy clubs all the time. Yeah. Well, the, I think the improv in in Riverside. I've seen some big names at. I'm a big David Tell fan. Um, probably one of the funniest fans I've I've ever I've ever seen live. I saw him in Philly not long ago. SoCal and, uh, has a bunch of uh, of of improvs, but uh, also Hollywood has, uh, of course, the Laugh Factory and the Comedy Store, and there's an improv in Hollywood as well. Is the Comedy Store the one that's owned by Polly Shore's mom? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yes, but uh, Laugh Factory is that's where uh, that's where Michael Richards got into trouble. Yeah, you might want to see right. it just I, for that. Of course, I saw it. <laughs> there's that one in New York, by the way. Yeah, on Eighth Avenue in New York City. That Michael Richards thing got me going. I uh, got a lot of people going. 
I, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily overly upset. I mean, I just really proved my point that Michael Richards has Tourette's, which was amazing. <laughs> he was on stage, on stage tw twitching and screaming. Uh, he didn't I, even look like he was conscious. I have always said, you know, as you know, there are federal guidelines, federal laws about discriminating against people because they have a handicap. Yeah. I always thought the perfect crime, being that it's a federal law that says you can't discriminate, I always thought you need to have like a morning. Since they can't, the FCC is cracking down, you should have a morning man who's got Tourette's. Yeah. Because that yeah. way, when he says the F word on the you say, "Hey, hey, this man's disabled. He's got a handicap. Man, we can't, we can't fire fight. him. We can't fire him. He's going to sue us." Yeah. So I, yeah. I think the perfect. You want to get a guy on the air who like can, can do a real shock jock morning show? Get a guy with Tourette's. Yeah. Well, didn't uh, Adam Cole just do that? Ooh, <laughs> burn. Sorry, that's wrong. <laughs> I like. James I don't Bonaduce. think so. I like Bonaducci. He makes me laugh. He's on. He, right. the, 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 come on, now, the, 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 Danny says a lot of things on the air, but he doesn't curse on the yeah, air. No, no, no. Actually, he's he's funny. He's you know, Danny Bonaducci used to do a show in Philly. That's what I was going to say. Didn't he work in Philly? Yes, I, I caught Danny Bonaducci. Wait, isn't he? Wait, wait, isn't he from Philly? Way, way, way back. Like, wasn't he born there or something? I don't know if he was born there. He used to well, the I thought. He I thought. Now, I might be getting this story wrong, and he'll correct me if I'm wrong. But I thought I had heard that they'd hired his mom at the radio station in Philly. I thought that. I, that's what I heard. Well, Actually, when he did, yeah. When I was a young, when I was a young guy, I uh, I saw Danny Bonaducci hosting a MC an event at a at a roller skating rink in Warminster, Pennsylvania, a suburb outside of Philadelphia. He he is from Philly. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the grease ball in there just confirmed that. <laughs> yeah. I can hear him laughing down the hallway. Hey, well, you have a you have a great show. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blow up too much time. I appreciate right, the time you gave me today, Tom. Well, Brian, thank you very much for that. Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Tom Likas. Oh God. All flash just for you, okay, Tom? Thank you for that, Annie. I appreciate okay, that. Thank you for that. I appreciate All it. All right, I'm waiting for you. I'm gonna you're gonna do it while we're on the phone. Here comes. <sighs> They're, like, staying back behind. Well, why don't you uh, get your boyfriend to slow down a little bit? Okay. Honey, you need to slow down a little bit. Yeah. Okay, here I go. All right. Woo! Okay. I just did it. All right! Oh, he's smiling. I hope he was listening. Otherwise, he just thinks I'm crazy. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. 97.1. KLSX 3 FM. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood on this Flash Friday. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Frank on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going, buddy? Great. Great. Hey, uh, I was just uh, driving home, kind of wondering, pondering the thought. Let's say, uh, hypothetically, you pulled a stunt like uh, I miss and uh, got booted off the air, maybe got sued for what you said, was stripped of all your money. What would you do to start over to make it again? Well, first of all, uh, to, uh, to be honest with you, I'm in a financial position where I wouldn't have to start again. I could just say, F it, I'm done. By the way, I think Imus at 67 years old is in that position as well. Well, I'm saying, just a uh, guess. Let's say, <laughs> let's say for some reason they stripped you of everything. You were basically, you know. Dead in the water, your cash was stripped from you, they sued you for everything, you had to start over from scratch. Well, uh, I would certainly, uh, you know, uh, try to get back and uh, do what I do, because I know I can go back and make six figures again. Uh, usually when there's a controversy involving an individual, you have to wait till the dust settles, sure. give it a few months. I mean, my prediction is that Imus will be back on the air by, before the end of this year. Wow. So, uh, so let's say barring, let's say nobody would hire you for radio. So radio is out. Do you have, would you have any other avenue, you know, expertise that you would get into to make a million? Well, uh, I do have a lot of faith in my ability with investments. Okay. Because a lot of my fortune uh, is not from money I earned in radio, but from what I did with the money, which was investing. It. And uh, I had one stock in particular where I made uh, six hundred and fifty thousand dollars on one stock. Holy cow. And uh, so I have a lot of faith in my ability to do that. Having all the money I've made in radio, to be totally frank with you, uh, gave me an opportunity to, uh, uh, with real-world money, study uh, how to invest and how not to invest and 
how to avoid taxes uh, and things like that. And uh, I, I think that's something I could do. Okay. Yeah, I guess what I'm getting at is, uh, you know, stuff you might be looking at thinking, well, geez, if I wasn't doing this, this is this is where I'd be doing. This well, I do. I, I got I to gotta be honest with you. I love the stock market. I absolutely love it. Oh. Uh. And uh, I could easily uh, work with a hedge fund or a mutual fund or something like that. Oh, okay. All right, Tom. Sounds good. Uh, you know, maybe it's something I'll, I'll look at. I'm just uh, think about starting over at my age, and uh, you know, maybe looking at other opportunities. So, stock well, what do you what do you what do you love to do? Well, I like making money, and I'm not making enough of it, and uh, it just seems like I've uh, hit the ceiling, you know. So, uh, and I'm we used to have numbers. a screener who used to hit the ceiling all the time. What's that? We had once had a screener on this show who used to hit the ceiling. <laughs> but not not the same way you're hitting the ceiling. Right, right. You know, gets to the point where you like to make, make a little bit more, but, uh, you know, the, the, the you know position I'm in, that's about where I'm at where I'm going to be, you know, doing, you know, financially. So, you know, stock market's a, a good option, and maybe, maybe look into it, maybe get some... Uh, schooling or training what, what type of uh, training would you uh, recommend to people like myself well uh, you know the way that works uh, did you see the movie the pursuit of happiness i mean uh sure uh you yeah. know uh, there are ways you can get in at these brokerage houses with no background if you're a sales guy and you're willing to uh you know work 18 hours a day right right yeah i'm willing i'm doing that hours right now so i might as well uh do some work and make some more cash out of it mm -hmm. <laughs> right you know so all right well take me out will Holland style buddy Freddie Wilhite style. Here you go. I shot my wife in the stomach with 38. Why did you do this? She enticed me and she ridiculed me throughout my lifetime. I'll see if she's alive. She's alive? She's dead. I think she's dead. <laughs> 1-800-5-800-TOM. Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mark. Long time, first time. Yes. I am stuck in a bit of a pickle, and I need some advice from the professor. All right. I have a very sneaking suspicion that my best friend is sleeping with my uh, other good friend's wife, obviously behind his back. And uh, it's getting to the point where other friends in the group have pretty much given me an ultimatum, being that I'm a little bit of the, uh, the alpha in the group, if you will. It said that uh, if I don't stand up and say something to one of the two culprits there, that uh, they are going to do so. And if they do indeed come out and tell my friend that uh, there is a suspicion that his wife is sweeping around on him, it will come down to the point where he will come to me and uh, wonder why I didn't step forward and say something sooner. So I am calling to see whether you think it's a good idea. To uh, your friend comes call. first. Yeah. Your friend comes first. And Always. They're both, uh, yeah, they're both good friends. I was the best man at one, one guy's wedding, and the other one was the best man at mine. Right. And I know that uh, the minute that these words come out of my mouth, nothing is ever going to be the same between any of the parties involved. Well, it's not. But uh, look, then, uh, if you have to pick between two friends, uh, the friend that comes out ahead is the one who's not doing anything wrong. That, that's a damn good point. So uh, do you uh, suggest that I go directly to him? And, yes. Uh, yes, I do. And just flat out tell them. Make that sure that you know what you're talking about, though, and don't make a mistake. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm worried about. I don't have any uh, hard evidence. All I've got is hearsay. Well, you could uh, uh, guide him in the right direction. You can. You can get. I would try to get a commitment from him to keep your name out of it. Keep in mind, if you're wrong, uh, none of them will talk to you again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm the one that's really not doing anything wrong. One thing you should definitely tell him not to do is uh, tell your uh, friend whose uh, wife is cheating, do not tell him uh, to put that uh, spy software on his computer. Right. That one that I tell you not to get called Spectre Pro. Right. It would be wrong to spend $99 at SpectreSoft.com and install that software on the computer to see what his wife is uh, up to online. Because if he installed that software, he would then know all her passwords and he would know her email and he would know what she's chatting about. And that's just raw.
That is just horribly wrong. Yes, and I, I definitely recommend he not do that. Well, that's something I may not recommend to him then. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, tell him not to go to spectersoft.com. Very good. I will uh, forget to tell him. And Spectre is spelled with uh, uh, with an O rather than an E. Very so good. When you're looking at websites not to go to, that would be one. That no, would be not one to this. Yeah, I would avoid that at all costs. Roger Especially that. Especially $99. That's not, uh, that's not too much money not to spend. Well, put it this way. If I were not going to spend money, that's certainly something that would be worth not spending money on. That's, that's a good point. I will uh, I will forget to recommend that to him. Yeah, please don't do that. And tell yeah, him yeah. not to do it if he happens to be on the Internet. If he happens to run into that site, uh, don't be downloading that software and putting it on the computer because, my God, you put that software in, then you've got every email your wife has sent, you know, every password she's uh, she's got, you know, who she chats with, you know, a that website she visits, wrong. and that, that would be wrong. You don't want to be doing that. No. No. Well, Professor, I appreciate your help, and uh, if you could take me out with no cough, that would be a great way to end my Flash Friday. I certainly can, Mark. Here you go. No cough. Cody, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom. I love the show. Thank you. Uh, I just heard you talking about the investments, and I am just came into some cash myself. I'm looking to make a little money. I want to know what you made that huge, uh, you know, that huge amount of money. In. What well, it doesn't, what well, it was biotech, but it's very risky, and you really have to know what you're doing to invest in a biotech stock. Yeah, it's, it's, I assume it's kind of like technology. You never know what's going to take off, right? Right. Yeah, okay. I will tell you this. I I uh, was in a relationship at the time, and I had an affair with somebody on the side. Yeah. And this chick I was dating on the side was a stockbroker. <laughs> nice. And she gave me this inside. Well, it's not insider trading. She gave me a tip about this company, and uh, the same tip she was giving to other investors that she uh, she had at her brokerage firm. And uh, I uh, put some money down. I put down fifty thousand dollars and uh, got back seven hundred thousand dollars on my investment. So uh, for a net uh, profit of six hundred and fifty thousand. So that is really good. So I mean, I mean, I not only got laid consistently, repeatedly, and it was just absolutely spectacular. But she gave me the best stock pick I ever had. Uh, she's out there somewhere, and I just want to say thank you. So what you do otherwise, you just read in paper, try and keep up on what's going oh, on? Oh, I read. I, I'm, I'm a fanatic for the Wall Street Journal. If you go to my house, there's a stack of newspapers. I read the Wall Street Journal, Business Week, Smart Money. I watch CNBC, a little bit of Bloomberg. I'm always reading and studying this. I read all the websites. I, I really keep up on it because I'm, I'm interested in it. Yeah. But yeah, got, uh, my uh, word of recommendation to you, I don't know how much, how much money do you have? About 10 G's. All right, do not play this like it's Las Vegas, okay? Oh, I know, I know. Don't be trying to put $10,000 down the red or the black, all right? Because uh, <laughs> Wall Street doesn't work that way. They eat people like you for lunch. Oh, no, I've been reading some books. They met, they recommend spreading it out among mutual funds. That's right. All that sort of stuff. And you dollar cost averaging. Deals. You don't put it all in at one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Tom, I love the show. Uh, you have a good one, all right? All right, you too. Appreciate the call. 1 800 5 800 Tom. JB. On the Tom Likas show. Hello. Um, I got a question for you. Well, I need some advice, please. Yes. Um, my girlfriend is moving to Texas because her father bought her a house and land out there. And we've been girlfriends for like, uh, she's been my girlfriend for eight years. And I really don't want to go to Texas with her because I have my family, my grandchildren, my good job out here. And, but she still wants to be. Um, very close to me until she leaves. So what should I do? Should I be close and then when she leaves, just let her go? Or Well, you certainly uh, you got that piece of ass you're enjoying there. I would certainly enjoy it while it's there. Yes, sir. Um, it's the, J you know, just, JB, just, it's the perfect crime. It is, man. You, you, know? you, you keep tapping that ass, and then when she has to leave, tell her, well, sorry, honey, sorry, you got to go. And then uh, not only can you move on to uh, greener pastures, but uh, if you happen to go to Texas, you got a good weekend of banging there uh, waiting for you anytime you want it. 
Hey, you know what? That sounds good, man. You know, it's just so hard to let go, you know. We oh, you okay. Right My wish, every chick that I've been dating over the past year, I wish they'd all move to some other state. Uh-huh. Oh, sorry to see you go, honey. And then, then of course, any time I need to get some tail, <laughs> I just look at whatever state we're traveling to with the show, and I go, well, I'm going to be in Texas next week. How about uh, we hook up? Awesome, awesome. That's what you do. Awesome, man. I appreciate your advice. You know, it's just kind of hard to let go sometimes, but that's what you got to do. You know, just have fun while you can. I what guess. are you going to do, move to Texas? No, you're not. Not. <laughs> I mean, I love Texas, but uh, the point is, uh, you've got a job, you've got a career, you uh, absolutely, you got kids. You said, yeah, I got kids, grandkids. You're not. Um, you're, you're 42. You have grandchildren. Come on, come yeah, on. Oh yeah. Jesus. So you you did you get at least a high school diploma? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, grandchildren. Too, so. Grand. How do you get grand? Oh, your kids are fourteen and having kids. What? what? Well, yeah, I, I raised a few that weren't mine. I raised them since they were six and eight, so I consider oh, them mine. They're you like know. stepchildren. I, I yeah, I have seven kids, three of them by blood. So I have seven kids that call me daddy. Unbelievable. All right, JB. Yeah. Well, JB, you're not going anywhere. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I've called a couple doctors, and I didn't know they were Oriental. They had a normal name. What's a normal name? John or something, or Robert, or something that wasn't like Kung Shu or Wa Wang or something. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh-huh. Sorry, I'm not racist. But I know, I can tell. It's the Tom Likas Show. 97.1. KLSX 3 FM. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM on this Flash Friday from Hollywood. It's Ashley. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement, Ashley? Yes, I sure do. I'm trying to decide <laughs> what I'm going to do because my husband of 10 years, been together with him three, um, has had several kind of wait, emotional Wait, wait, affairs. wait, 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 stop. Yeah. Your husband of 10 years, you've been together with him for three. On top of the 10 that we've been married. I was with him for three years before we got So married. you've been with him for 18 years. That means since you were 13? No, 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 no. I'm 31. I got 31. together with him when I was 18. Oh, 18. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. So uh, what is he doing now? Well, he had he had, had feelings for, and all of this kind of stems from, like, the, the porn sexual fantasy type of thing. Um, he was having an emotional affair with um, some kind of friend, acquaintances of ours down in the Keys. And then what happened was he decided he wanted to have kind of a bigger emotional affair with one of the girls at work. What is an emotional? Like, wait, wait, stop. What is an emotional affair? To where he's actually developing feelings for another female because I guess he's, well, I know he's got kind of a crazy sex side to him that he likes to be, you know, talked to um, kind of sickly. <laughs> Well, let's review. You are not giving him what he needs. Right. You refuse to give him what he needs. Well, I've tried, but he doesn't like to hear it from me because I'm not new and different. All right. Well, uh, so what do you want to do about this? Well, I'm trying to decide because I'm very mixed about what I do want. All the decision's been made. I hate and to tell you. So he's not in love with me anymore. Correct. I'll well, put it this way. Whether he is or he isn't, uh -huh. he's clearly looking for new uh, new fields to plow. Uh-huh. Clearly. But then when he realized that he was going to lose his 20 acres and um, possibly half of his half of a half a mil, he was like, oh, all of a sudden now I need to be the better husband. Well, guess what, dear? Do you, that yeah. That's being married to a hostage. Yeah. Not somebody who loves you. Right. Okay. So if it were me, I'd be out the door. Yeah. Okay. I mean, do you want to stay with somebody who's with you because he was afraid he was going to lose half of what he has? 
Well, no, but now he's saying that, you know, he wants to work on bettering the marriage and that he, you know, has had problems as a child expressing himself, and that's why he... Really? So he's, really, is he in know, therapy? Tell me, pardon? Is he in therapy? Yes, we are now. You are now? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what have you learned by going to therapy with him? That um, he's just got a lot of underlying issues that I'm trying to, you know, that he's working on trying to express how he feels. And then I, you know, express how I feel. And I don't know that I've really learned that much other than sometimes I just need to shut up and let him talk. Well, that's a good uh, piece of advice for every woman listening to this show. Yeah. The women just can't shut up. Right. As you know. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm doing that, and, and I'm trying to be that better part. And, and um, you know, and, and the other part that I'm not really sure that I understand is that he wants me to talk, like, about just what he wants to talk about and, you know, everything else. Like, if we try to communicate about business and everything else, he just doesn't want to understand and thinks that all of my ideas are horrible, which, you know, I mean, I've gotten over that. I can adjust to that. But it's like he kind of got wrapped up and his whole life was revolving around anything that was porn. I mean, it was on the computer all the time, um, watching TV on the satellite. He would, you know, stay up all night to watch that and then be tired for work and then go to work and talk about it. And, um, yeah, well, he I didn't. Just, he didn't suddenly become like that. No, it's just been progressively getting worse. Right. So, and I'm not objected to porn. I mean, I think it's kind of something to add spice to our life. But he just has kind of, you know, taken it way out of control because he it puts him in a comfort zone. Well, look, you can't analyze him, and neither can I. Like okay. I, I less than him. I don't really care what his uh, motivation is. If I'm you, I care about what how everything affects you. Right. Right. And all he wants to do is play out all the crazy stuff on the pornos, and I'm not into, you know, some of the stuff that, and I feel that he needs to respect me for that, too. Well, again, dear, it sounds to me like, uh, well, you'll go to the therapist. You'll let it play out. For me, yeah. uh, that would be more than enough information for me to get out. Yeah, because if it's happened three times, what's to say it's not going to happen again? What's that? Wait, wait, stop, that stop, stop. What happened three times? That he he was head over heels feeling feelings for somebody, but then when they dumped him, he's like, oh. They dumped him? You know, wait, wait, stop, so stop. They dumped him. What, you mean they dumped him with an IM? We're not talking about He didn't actually met any of these people. Oh, no, this is person. I mean, in person, people. So he was having sex with other people. Not actually having sex, but talking about the whole act of having sex. I don't believe person. that. I don't believe that for one minute. If he's a if he's a porn addict, yeah, and he felt unsatisfied at home, that's well, what he's our telling sex you. Life was pretty good at home. I don't care. He had plenty yeah. to spread around. Clearly, yeah, yeah. And obviously, he's telling you that he didn't have an affair because he doesn't want to lose his stuff. Right. But come on, uh, the, I don't know of a man in the world who goes out and has emotional affairs with actual people. Yeah. You know, men are out there getting laid. Right. And he probably got laid. Right. Right? Okay. Well, I don't know for sure. No, you don't, but he probably did. Right. Can you live with that? No. Well, if you can't live with that, then I don't know why you're still there. Yeah. Well, we're kind of having a trial separation and that type of thing, but I needed to get some business stuff resolved before I do this. So, well, but. you need an attorney, darling. If I were you, I'd be out getting one. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, here comes. Uh, look at these. Wow, Andrew, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah. What? Yeah. Hello. Oh. Yeah. This is Andrew. Yeah. 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 So I already talked to you. Huh? I already talked to you. You already talked to who? Some some screener. And now who do you want to talk to? Tom. All right. The 
Tom Likas show at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Andrew. Hello. Yeah, hello. Yes. Um, so I've already talked to one screener. Do you want me to repeat what's up or what? Well, you, you have talked to a couple of screeners before you get on with Tom. Oh, all right. Do you want to know what I'm calling about? No. Would you like to sit in calm silence? That's what I was doing. All right. Would you like to talk to Tom? Sure. Okay. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1 800 5 800 Tom. Andrew. Hello. Hello. Tom. And Tom. on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom. On the Tom Likas show. It's Andrew. Hello. Tom. On the Tom Likas show. Let's go to Andrew. Hello. Tom. On the Tom Likas show. Let's see. We've got Andrew. Hello. Hey, Tom. Let's see who we've got here. Uh oh, Andrew on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Thomas Likas. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Andrew. Hello. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Jenna on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom. Hi. I'm a, a new listener and first time caller. Uh huh. And you know, like many women, I hate to sound like a broken record. At first, I just could not believe the things that you would talk about. But as I started to listen, you know, I just really admitted that you know what, you're right. A lot of the women are like that. But anyways. Moving on, the main reason I'm calling is because I'm going to be receiving um, a settlement for about 150000 and I truly don't know what to do with it. I'm 32, and, you know, I'm kind of stuck in working in corporate America, and I just want to do something for myself and just kind of start up a business, but I want to make the money grow first. So I was wondering if you had any advice for an amateur investor. Well, first of all, dear, uh, when when <laughs> uh, you got this from what, a, like a car accident or something? Well, unfortunately, my my father passed away, and um, we're selling the the home, the duplex we have in Southern California. So, splitting it three ways with my brother and sister. So, that's where I'm getting the money from. So, you're getting fifty thousand or one hundred fifty thousand? About one hundred fifty. Right. Do you have any debts? Did you hear me? No. Um, what did you say? Do you have any debts? Oh, um, probably at the most, maybe fifteen thousand. Not much. That's a lot. Fifteen? One, one five? Yeah, that's a lot of money. How much do you make? Um, I make about forty thousand a year. That's a lot of goddamn money. That's more than a third of a year's income. I know. I know. Why do you have fifteen thousand dollars in debt? Oh, how just you know. Uh, truly, I just didn't really think my credit was worth maintaining. Just there we go. You know, I used to, I, I used to, you know, go out, spend my money, you know, shopping. Sure, you did. And you know, <laughs> your first investment, dear, is to pay off all your bills and then cut up your credit cards. 
that's your first investment, darling. Our email address, Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.